coal was not hard to discover in the area that is now Drumheller, Alberta, Canada. Seams of coal show up as black stripes in the badlands of the Red Deer River Valley. The natives knew of the black rock but did not use it, but in 1792 coal was discovered by European explorers. In the years that followed, a handful of ranchers and homesteaders dug coal out of riverbanks and the coolies to heat their homes. However, the first commercial coal mine did not open until Sam Drumheller started the coal rush in the area that now bears his name. A new railway was built and coal poured out of the Drumheller Valley in 1911. By the end of 1912, there were nine working coal mines, each with its own camp of workers, Newcastle, Drumheller, Midland, Rosedale, and Wayne. In the years that followed, more mines and camps sprang up, Knack Mine, Cambria, Willow Creek, Lehigh, and East Cooley. Coal mining was hard, dirty, dangerous work. Mining in the Drumheller Valley, however, was less hard, dirty and dangerous than it was in many other coal mining regions in Canada. This was due to both lucky geology and lucky timing. As you may have noticed, we are touring the Atlas Coal Mine, which is now a museum. And right now we're taking a look at all these wonderful signs. I love the artwork on these signs and the historical aspect they do have. Some of them are actually quite funny in today's terms. But as we tour through these mine uh, areas, um, we're going to notice a lot of instruments, a lot of old time antiques that abound in this area. Now, this appears to be a gas mask. And we have first aid equipment and more safety equipment, of course. Now, there were some dangers working in the mine, of course, but there wasn't very many accidents in this part of our country. This is a miner's cabin or a typical miner's cabin, and usually they would be just one room shacks, basically a stove, a bed, and a place to eat or sit, and your clothing and instruments kind of hanging out. Usually single men. Sometimes a whole family would live in here, a wife, maybe some children, and then you would have to move on and build a bigger cabin for yourself. But this was very typical. This is a small little cabin. Notice all the wash tubs underneath because coal mining is a dirty business. You do get very, very black and dirty from the coal seams and mining coal. Now this area just tells the history of the Atlas coal mine, who developed this area, who built these mines, and basically they came from all over, from Germany, from Ireland, from England, um, from Asia, Eastern Europe, Western Europe. It really was a mixed bag of people. I have no idea why there's lunch in those, or not lunch, but lunch boxes out. I guess you could pack your own lunch if you're a child. But you can see that there's just a vast array of people that would come here to be employed and to grow up in the Drumheller, Drumheller Valley. An old stove. Now this is the main tipple of the Atlas coal mine. It's, I believe, the last remaining wooden one in North America, but at least the last one in Canada. It is absolutely huge. It's impressive. You can see it from the highway as you're driving through, but it's really cool to see up front and personal. Now you can take a personal tour with a, a tour guide that takes you up the tipple. You get to walk inside of it. But today we're just going to check out the outside. Now this area is littered with um, antique machinery and automobiles. Um, a little bit dangerous if you're just running around over top of them but if you follow the trails you'll have no problem at all looks 
like an old miner's uh, house. But this is absolutely fascinating. Check this out. An old gas pump. Bennett. An old pickup truck. Just abandoned here. Carrying all the wood and tools for the miners. brand it is looks like a Chevy perhaps if you know the brand of that vehicle put that into the comments for me this appears to be an office for the miners so maybe this is where they would give you your pay at the end of the week or end of the month beautiful sign very, very vibrant. An old calendar from 1953. And a big GMC truck. Again, left abandoned here. Now, it does get very, very warm in the summer months, so I recommend you bring a hat, sunscreen, um, and cover yourself up because it does get very, very hot and very, very dry in this region. There's a lot of vehicles and equipment. Now you'll do a little bit of walking on this tour. It's not terrible though. There's not a huge amount to see, but you'll, you'll certainly do a lot of walking towards each one of these buildings. Looks like an equipment shed or a repair shed. So these guys would have to repair all the equipment have all the necessary tools to do so and all the parts that you would need for each one of those tractors, drills, uh, steam pressed operated machinery, maybe even the railway that ran through here. Now you can see there's a lot that is off limits due to safety um, of the buildings that are in disrepair, but also all the equipment that is left behind. So you have to stay on these paths that are well guarded with these fences. Now ahead of us is the wash house. It's a really interesting house. It's where the miners would wash after their work in the, the mine shafts. But it also was a place to wash clothes, and it was also a place where many families actually washed as well, because it was the only place with running hot water. So if you had a little miner's cabin like that one we've seen previously, and you had a family that needed to wash up or wash their clothes, this was the place to do it. So it was like a community hub. So let's just sneak past that tour group, and we'll go into this wash house ourselves. So as you enter the wash house, you'll notice there's a big stove. There's a lot of clothes hanging because as you wash your clothes, the heat would rise, the steam would rise in some areas, but mostly the heat in this area is the change room is here and it would dry your clothes up quite comfortably. Now, I can't imagine this in the winter, trying to take a shower in here and then trying to wash your clothes. It must have been pretty terrible, but we'll continue in the back area. And there's a mural over here. But yeah, they would just hang up their clothes on these hooks, pull them up with their baskets. It would protect the clothes and dry them nicely. Now, back through this door, this is the actual area where you would wash up. This would be the shower room. So literally hundreds of men in here, all clamoring, showering, and the nozzles are at the top. You pull your nozzle down and you wash up and there's a, a small little sink, I guess, to brush your teeth or kind of wash up individually at the sink. But thousands upon thousands upon thousands of men, women and children use this facility for decades. Big old 
wood stove. Now, one of the things you'll hear about the Atlas coal mine is that it is haunted, that people see ghostly figures or shadow figures in some areas. Uh, but the, the shower room has always kind of gave off a, a weird vibe. Um, there has been sightings in here of ghostly figures, but it could just be this really creepy atmosphere. Now, as I lift this up, you'll notice there's a second floor of this building. Now, this second floor is actually really interesting because a lot of people don't know it, but when they restored this building and they were kind of fixing it up, they actually found a bed up there and a small little room. Now that little room that they found up there, well, that could have been Alice's room. And Alice was, well, she was a lady of the evening. So she would um, not only wash clothes, um, dry the clothes for people, but she would offer other services. It looks like a wood cutter's cabin, just storing wood for the, to fire up the wash house. But there's also some other things in here. And we'll slip past, hopefully, this child. And this is, I guess, where the, the miners would get their lamps from. All their electrical equipment kind of checking in and checking out. So battery lamps um, that were made from, I believe, the Edison Company. So these are huge, massive, heavy batteries. Yes, Edison. One of the things was safety. So you would have to have these in excellent repair. You would have to check them in and out because one spark in a coal mine could set off an explosion depending on what gases are in there. And we've seen that kind of disaster happen in Southern Alberta before, but not in this area. Um, especially at the Atlas coal mine, there hasn't been any real disasters per se. Of course, there's injuries and, and maybe some cave-ins here and there, but not absolutely terrible disasters. Now, they did have um, a room in here before um, in one of these buildings that was actually the doctor's room. I don't believe we're going to be seeing that. I'm not sure if it's been closed down. But the female doctor that worked there um, actually treated a whole bunch of injuries. And of course, people did perish sometimes. Just a whole bunch of interesting artifacts. So this just shows you fire damp, after damp, black damp, suffocating gases, stink damp. Hydrogen sulfide produced by smoldering gob fires. Everything sounds scary as hell <laughs> to work in those places. And it was. It was really, really scary. But more importantly, super difficult work. So some of these buildings, they have these big, huge, massive cranes and um, to load up the, the railway tracks and the train tracks that would come through here. The railway would come through, fill up with coal and be on its way to be used in different centers across Alberta and basically across uh, North America as well. So the typical is right up the side of that little mountain there. You can see the railway track and you can see how big this actually wooden tipple is. It's pretty massive. And it's pretty incredible that it is actually still standing and you get to visit this amazing location. Now, if you're really into mining, antiques, um, and history, this is a really cool, interesting place to visit. It's kind of like it's semi-abandoned, but... There's still tours and stuff that you can go see. So it's a safe environment just to see an almost abandoned, I guess you could say, location. So if you're into urban exploration, this is a really neat, interesting place. You can do so without trespassing, without kind of hopping the fence and 
getting yourself in trouble. You know, they do do special tours here. You can um, go up the tipple. Um, at Halloween time, they got a little ghost walk. Um, I believe they do a whole bunch of different historical things for schools as well. But just going on a tour by yourself is kind of interesting. You get to walk along at your own pace and see the different items. Now we're going to go inside this box car. And from the outside, it looks big, but from the inside, it's actually quite huge. So, of course, box cars would come through here delivering goods to all the communities, East Cooley all the way to Wayne and Drumheller, of course. But most of these railway lines were just designed for coal, just big, gigantic trains pulling coal. Because almost every single house, um, especially in the 1900s, early 1900s to 1930s, um, even up to the 1970s was heated by coal. And a lot of the houses in these areas still have coal chutes um, where you can see where the coal was uh, dumped into their basements to heat the houses in gigantic furnaces. Once again, the sheer size of this tipple is pretty amazing. So thank you so much for joining me on this small tour of the Atlas Coal Mine. Um, it is open during the spring and summer and fall months. Um, and it's just directly um, within the Drumheller Valley. So it's a very easy place to get to, even if you're visiting Calgary, um, if you're going to see the dinosaurs in the Dinosaur Museum in Drumheller, or if you're on your way to Edmonton as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you found it enjoyable. Thank you so much.